And basically, I saw this woman and she was carrying a very heavy, strong, enticing presence. And as I was going down to preach, I saw her look at me and I heard the Holy Spirit say, that's a principality. It is Jay from Forever Blessed Ministries and we're out here at Dallas Fort Worth Airport. We are heading to Vegas. We are stepping on the devil. Amen. Principalities are real. And the word of God says in Ephesians 6, 12, that we don't wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, rulers and forces of evil. But yeah, guys, I'm finally settled in the hotel, but we're going to get straight into the video. It's most likely I was visited by a principality and I'm going to explain this crazy encounter. And I actually had a lot of encounters like this while traveling, but I really want to share this one because it was interesting how vivid it was. And, you know, usually when I'm coming against principalities, either I'm fighting them or the Lord is showing me, OK, this is where the principality is. But in Vegas, it was different. And this principality was a woman and she was right by. Um, I don't know if they call it escalators, but it was like those stairs that moved down. And basically, I saw this woman and she was carrying a very heavy, strong, enticing presence. And as I was going down to preach, I saw her look at me and I heard the Holy Spirit say, that's a principality. That's a spirit. Son, don't go near her. And I was like going towards her until I felt her enticing presence, almost like it felt very, um, it felt very devious. It felt very nefarious. And I knew that if I didn't listen at this point, I would be destroyed. And this is a scripture that backs up what I'm saying. It says, flee from sexual morality. I was probably thinking, I'm going to fight this thing. But the thing about lust and perversion, you cannot fight it. Especially if you're out here in these streets and you're seeing women that are tempting, you know, men that are tempting. If you're a woman preacher, you have to be very vigilant. And I heard the Lord say, don't go there, my son. Don't go near that because there's principalities that are luring people in. I think in Proverbs 5, it says her, her mouth looks, her mouth drips honey, but her path leads to death. You know, her, her words are smooth as oil. Many of you might not believe me, but we don't wrestle against flesh and blood. There's spirits that are literally demons. You know, they, they come and they take the form of a human and they entice people and they snatch your soul. That's why this walk with Christ is serious. Many pastors, they fall and you ask how they fall. It happened in the spirit before it manifested in the physical. It starts with one seed of perversion, disobedience, you know. And I actually have five keys to remaining in this walk and your calling. And number one is consecration is the formula to your divine destination. You can't say you're a soldier for Christ. You can't say you're at war if you're not disciplining yourself. Because let's say you're you're doing a, a wrestling match, Ephesians 6, 12, or wrestling against principalities. You know, you might hit the devil for one, two. But here's the thing. If you go over a certain weight limit, they disqualify you. Let's say the wrestling match is set for a certain weight and you go over, you disqualify yourself. And many of you are thinking, okay, how do I get heavy spiritually? I might as well go to the gym, take cold showers, you know, read my Bible more. But it's it's really different. It's actually um, reading your Bible is good, right? But you got to deny yourself. Jesus said, if any man come after me, let him deny himself, pick up his cross daily and follow me, right? And it also says this in the Bible, you must die to yourself daily. Think about what dying to yourself means. It means that if you desire watching Netflix, guys, I don't even own a TV in, in my apartment. My whole house is an altar of prayer because the Lord has shown me that if you have your Bible, open up Luke chapter 9, verse 61. It says, yet another said, I will follow you, Lord, but let me first say farewell at my home. Hallelujah. And I'm going to start now from verse 62. And this is the key. Listen to this verse, right? Jesus said to him, no one who puts his hand to the plow and looks back is fit for the kingdom of God. You cannot start the, your ministry. You cannot start whatever the Lord is calling you to do and be like, you know, what? this is tiring. This is hard and turn back. And say, oh, I'm a disciple of Christ. I believe in Jesus. Jesus said, you cannot be my disciple. You're not worthy. And that's why I'm going so hard, saints of God. That's why I literally have to die to myself days in prayer, days at the feet of Jesus Christ. 
And I don't want people to get the misconception that I'm doing this for views. If I was in the flesh doing this for views, I would not be doing this for Christ. If my aim was to please man, I would not be a follower of Christ Jesus. I would be at Vegas at the clubs getting up on all the women, but that's not me anymore. And it's really humbling because it's a privilege to serve God. It's a privilege to travel for the Lord. But I want to really, I really want to um, emphasize that we have to stay consecrated because the word of God says the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. You have to understand there's nothing good that dwelleth in your flesh. There's so much temptations. And I, I carry the fear of the Lord every time I travel to a place. I say, Lord, keep me, Lord, at your feet. And I pray. I give that time. Um, as soon as I got here, I was staying at prayer because the flesh is weak. The flesh is weak. And I want to keep going on with the story with, with the principality woman. You know, I think her name is Asher. I think she's like the queen of lust or something. There's a lot of wicked spirits, saints of God. There's a lot of evil in this world. But as long as we have Christ Jesus, we have authority to trample upon snakes and scorpions. We, we have been given a right to be seated at heavenly places with Christ Jesus. But not every authority is given to the believer, right? The demons could be like, Paul, I know. Jesus, I know. But who are you? You have been given a right. But some of you aren't exercising the rights that are given to you, right? But I'll keep continuing from number two, right? I wrote this down. It says, a good soldier doesn't get entangled in civilian affairs. Let's say the Lord calls you to Miami or the Lord calls you to a nice place, right? You don't take what the Lord has given you to go on a vacation. Oh, I'm going to use the name of Jesus, you know? but I'm not going to let him use me. No, we are not to use the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is using us. We are supposed to die to ourselves. You know, I'm at a, I think like this is a resort. I don't even know if they have a poor casino. In my flesh, before I was saved, I would be like, let me hit up the jacuzzi. Let me go to the hot tub. Let me do this. But no, I'm thinking, no, I need to kill my flesh. I need to fast. I need to pray because I'm starting to preach um, in a couple of days. I think Friday, maybe Saturday too. But we're going to preach. So I cannot be in the flesh. I have to be in the spirit. And it comes from discipline. It comes from being like, you know, what? I'm going to put the Netflix down. You know, what? I'm going to sh shut off social media. I might go on there to post, but the rest of the time needs to pr be disciplined because I'm talking to many of you here that you might be watching, but a couple years, maybe months, maybe weeks or days, the Lord will call you. And a call from God is the most honorable thing that could ever happen in someone's life. And God is not to play with. You can't play with the call of God. There's pastors, there's leaders that they fall because they don't understand the cost of this walk. The cost is not just 99.9. Um, .9, it's everything. It's everything. But I'm going to go to number three. Hallelujah. It says obedience is better than sacrifice. Obedience is better, right? You could fast. You could pray. You could read the word. But are you where the Lord has called you to be? Are you trying to be an apostle when the Lord has called you to be a, a usher? Are you trying to be a prophetess when the Lord has called you to simply be at his feet? And, and there's a parable with the wedding banquet, right? Where there was a man that sat in the honorable place and he was put to shame because he didn't belong there. There was someone more distinguished. There's people in this walk that are fasting 40 days. They're praying seven hours. There's people. I don't even know. I, I don't, I'm not at that level yet. I pray, Lord willing, that I'll reach that level. But you have to understand, saints of God, there's people that are really willing to lay themselves at the altar. So if you're coming like, I'm, I'm this prophet and I'm called to the nations, well, I want to tell you, walk in a manner worthy of your calling. The word of God says many are called, but few are chosen. I had to show the Lord, Lord, you know, I'm willing to go on a week fast. I'm willing to do this, Lord, for you because I want to please you, right? So obedience is better than sacrifice. Number four, God gives grace to the humble. Realizing the grace of God is realizing, God, thank you for even allowing me to pray. 
Thank you that I had breath, that I could seek your face today, that I don't have to abuse your grace and take everything that you have given me. I'm telling you, by the grace of God, you are saved. But God wants to produce something in you. You don't just come to Christ and have all these gifts and be like, you know, I'm going to sit in my corner. I'm just going to go to church. You know, I don't want to share my talents, my my gifts to the people. I don't want to bring anyone to Christ. No, we are called to be used as vessels, empty vessels for the Holy Spirit because we all have gifts, you know, and we can't be prideful. But the Lord has been showing me that, you know, he gives grace to the humble. When you humble yourself, God will use your gifts in an honorable way. He'll exalt you. The word of God says he he um resist the proud but he gives grace to the humble but yeah the last one is um number five is a lot of you ask me you're like man jay how are you so bold man i wish i had your courage right but i want to tell you i'm not bold in my flesh i'm shy in my flesh i'm timid in my flesh i'm insecure but in the spirit when i say lord fill me lord i let go i decrease so that you could increase that is when the boldness comes because of the anointing. You need the anointing. You can't preach in the street. I, I want to tell you, you could be the most confident person in your flesh. But if you, the moment you pick up a mic, the demons, they smell fear and they're going to test you. They're going to throw stuff at you of who I am in the spirit. These demons, when they see me in the spirit, they see fire. Because you need the fire of God. It comes from a consecrated lifestyle of prayer, fasting, laying yourself at the altar. And here's the best part about a, a good disciplined life with, with God and really crossing that line of fire. In your dreams, you'll start to see the demons running away. You'll start to see yourself conquering. There's some of you that are going through cycles. I was going through this evil patterns of, you know, sexual dreams of eating in your dreams, you know, repetitive patterns. You know, there's there's demons that are assigned to people to make sure that they don't pass a certain level, a certain threshold. And I talked about this on live, but you have to really ask the Lord, Lord, what is it going to cost to break that threshold? It might be, OK, give up me, give up, you know social media and pray pray four hours at least god will put a specific rule for you and this is not legalism this is serious ask any man of god that has been exalted or woman of god there's a specific rule that god will give you to elevate you to give you that key to breaking the threshold because every padlock has a key you know and these are just keys to being successful so I hope you guys enjoyed this. I don't know how you guys feel about this wisdom, but I pray that you guys listen, that you guys took these nuggets. And in Jesus' name, I love everyone. I'm going to be preaching in Vegas. Keep me in prayer. In Jesus' name.